I'm here to present you uh, a part of uh, our work on uh, modeling and uh, verification of uh, Bruce evasion. And this part, we uh, we will uh, in this paper we talked that we talk uh, we talked about uh, the Bruce evasion, the modeling of Bruce evasion uh, strategies strategies using uh, graph and uh, verification of this model and uh, this uh, the strategies using Petrina. So uh, the main objective of uh, this work is to advance models and techniques for environment modeling and the search methods in known environments using graphs. And then after uh, modeling environment using graphs, we use the Petri nets for validation and uh, to aim to enhance efficiency, particularly in disaster management uh, scenarios. And and for uh, and this work is a, a gra in the uh, to to establish a, a groundwork for potential applications in dynamic environments and 3D scenarios. So what we uh, we will uh, discuss in this presentation, we will uh, I will present you um, a little brief uh, main, uh, presentation of the main problem of uh, the pursuit evasion. And uh, I will present uh, the topo topo topological uh, modeling of the environment, uh, real environment, uh, how it is modeled, and then uh, how to model this environment and the uh, graph uh, model using PetriNet. And I will present some uh, practical and simulation tests using software mobile agent and the real mobile robot, which is a pop bot. And we finish with conclusion and perspectives. So the main problem of uh, pursuit evasion is uh, that uh, every, every every time we have an intruder or uh, someone is not uh, welcome or something so someone we are are searching looking for is in uh, inside the place and we cannot uh, find it. So the main problem is how to find it and find this one or find uh, this uh, person. Uh, assuming that this person has uh, uh, has uh, we don't know anything about his uh, place and we don't know anything about his uh, speed for example we have here an example of a uh, museum there is a robbery in 2015 of uh, a museum uh, and this is a pro uh, an example of uh, how big it is uh, museums uh, at uh, uh, this for example uh, in U uh, USA uh, we can see that uh, the museum is very big. For example, uh, for the example, I take the example for uh, for uh, the museum because it's very big, big and uh, all the time we have uh, very valuable uh, items there. So we, uh, we need uh, uh, much time, uh, a lot of time to inspect uh, this on uh, this environment using uh, using people and agents. So why not use a multi-agent system and robots and uh, collaborate with humans to minimize and um, to minimize and optimize the scenario to verify every place in this in this um, this uh, building with the, the minimum of uh, agents and the minimum of time. Other uh, application of pursuit evasion problem is when the intruder is not uh, Welcome. Where, where is uh, the intruder? We need to look for this intruder. For example, the case of uh, uh, the case of uh, catastrophe catastrophes like, for example, the earthquake. For example, this example of 2011 earthquake in uh, 6.3 uh, degrees in uh, New Zealand. Uh, we can see that uh, in the case of earthquake or uh, the natural disasters. Uh, all the buildings will uh, will be uh, destructed, and uh, maybe we have we have survivors inside the, uh, this place. So we need to find them with the minimum of efforts because it's very dangerous, and with the, with the minimum, especially with the minimum of time, because uh, maybe they are survivors, and we need uh, to help them because before they will uh, die in uh, suffocation or uh, or the building will uh, destruct will be destructed uh, more. So, for these uh, problems, this is uh, the, the pursuit evasion problem. So, to to be able to use to model the scenarios of pursuit evasion, we must first we must uh, model the environment. Here, 
uh, this is a, an example the method how we use we, the method used to uh, model the environment we start with the environment with the red uh, points are uh, red places are uh, obstacles for example uh, walls and the uh, blank or white uh, bl white places are uh, uh, void where uh, the age will uh, can uh, can uh, mo uh, move here the two examples we have at left uh, the example uh, simulation example and the second is uh, model real model of uh, building building with the desktops that uh, used we used uh, for uh, simulation uh, the second part is how to model the uh, the vertices of visibility the vertices of visibility are points our vertices are nodes. We, we can say that uh, they are nodes with uh, in uh, walls that they have more than 100, 180 degree opening. For example, we have here number three is uh, here. This point is a critical point in the environment because if we ha are here, we can we don't see this place. So every place with more than 180 degrees. It's the place that uh, maybe an intruder is uh, hidden there. So after uh, uh, generating all uh, the visible vertices, we generate a graph, a graph visibility where each uh, two points, each two vertices that sees each uh, see each other are connected with the indirect and uh, directed lane. Here, for example, we have, uh, for example, we can take uh, points one, two, and three. We can see that one, two. Are seen by three and two can see one and three etc but for example the point number five in point number five if we have uh, an agent here in point uh, number five he can see number three and number six but he can't see number two and number one because there is no direct link because three is critical is a vertex with critical uh, angle so after generating graffiti a graph a visibility graph we have to we, we we I present you some definitions that are used to, to generate uh, the second graph. We have uh, an undirected graph. Undirected graph. Uh, we all know that uh, an undirected graph, an undirected sorry uh, graph, is where, uh, for example, we have a link uh, between each uh, some points. For example, one to five. We can go from one to five, and we can go from one five to the one. Uh, the second is connected graph. The connected graph is the graph where each point, each vertex, we can go from each ver uh, any vertex to another vertex with no problem using the links between them. And this, uh, the third uh, th third definition, which is very important for our work, is the click. The click, the click is in, uh, for example, here is uh, in red. The click is a set a subset of uh, vertices where are they are connected uh, each the other uh, each one to the others. For example, we have here one, two, five generate a click. This click where where we can see that there is a link from one to five and two, from five to one and two, and from two to one and five. So we have a click here. And using this the definition, we can generate a, a second type of graph, which is area graph, where we connect every click and generate and represent each click with the one uh, vertex, which is an area. Here is an example. We have here an example of uh, environment, for example. We have here vertices from V1 to, uh, I think, V15. Uh, we, we have V15, so we have 15 vertices. Uh, we are connected with the visibility graph. And after that, we generate clicks. We have here, well, we have eight clicks. Okay, from these clicks, we generate a, a new area graph, which is at the right, with the, at the right, with eight uh, areas, zone or area. So we have to now. We uh, I will uh, I will define each uh, type of uh, area. We have two three types of area with the different uh, degrees. We have the first one is the, the degree of one. We can call it uh, leaf. For here, for example, area uh, three, five, and eight. The a leaf is the last uh, area in uh, different uh, in a place. For example, uh, in uh, it, it's uh, an open uh, place in the room. For example, if we enter to the room, it's the final uh, point. So if I enter and finish and clear and verify there is nothing, I can go out. 
the second type is uh, the, with degree two is called the corridor. Here we have uh, the two with the area two with area four and area six with area seven. Here we can see that uh, this corridor can be uh, can be verified by one agent that can go from two to four and then to five and finish with the leaf and they'll go, they'll go back. And the last one, which is the critical, is uh, the, the area with degree exceeding two. For example, here, the area number one. Area number one is critical is critical because it is connected with more than one uh, than two areas sorry and it is very important and we have and we have uh, all the time uh, use uh, an agent to verify this uh, and monitor all the time monitor this area so after modeling this environment using uh, visibility and area graph now we we will model the the, the pursuit evasion uh, behavior using uh, PetriNet. So we to to do so we we wish to uh, we wish to uh, validate uh, or we validate research techniques using PetriNet. This is our goal. To do so to do so we we have to model each area by four sub PetriNets. Here are the pet, uh, pet, sub PetriNets. We have uh, the first petri net, which is area petri net. Here we present each area with a place and uh, the connection, the connection between the areas with two uh, two transitions. Uh, here, for example, from area four to area two, we have a transition forward to go from two to four and backward to go to backward from far, four to two. And uh, we and uh, etc. For example, to, from A0 to A1, etc. And here we have the marking. Uh, we can uh, the call the, the, mark, the initial marking. The initial marking or uh, um, on time uh, real time marking is the number of tokens in each area. Here, this area. Then uh, the definition of uh, token here is each token is defined as uh, an agent that will. Uh, that will verify and clear this area, monitor uh, or we can say monitor this area. The second type of uh, behavior is Cortam. Here, this uh, this is subnet is part of the general uh, petri net, the global petri net. Here we can say that we have, if we have a token here not contaminated, it uh, means that the the area four is not contaminated, and if we have uh, uh, here. If we had uh, a token in A4, so we can say that the area four is contaminated. So to be decontaminated, to uh, to uh, to lose this token from not contaminated, or uh, to be to to go to contaminated, we have if if uh, it uh, it has the condition that it is not contaminated and but uh, not guarded. We don't we we have here. It's not guarded. This area will, does, doesn't have uh, a guardian or an agent. We will see this in the second uh, slide. And decontam all. Uh, here, this talk will, will be explained uh, later. Uh, not decontam all, uh, which means this the area, all the areas uh, connected to A4 uh, are not uh, are not contaminated. Are not decontaminated. Sorry. And the reverse. Uh, it is contaminated. It will be not contaminated or decontaminated if and only if there is a guardian in uh, area four. Here we have the second uh, behavior, which is guarded. Here we have a token in not guarded because it's not guarded, and uh, it will be uh, it will become guarded if and only if there is an agent in area A4, a token or token in area A4. And it will be not guarded, it will become not guarded if and only if there is no agent in area A4. And the last, uh, which is uh, a little uh, complicated, this decontam all. This decontam all, we can uh, re uh, we can give a general idea of, of this petri net, sub petri net that an area is the is decom decontam all. We have a Java token in decontam all A4, for example. If and only if all 
other uh, other uh, areas connected to this area uh, are decontaminated. And the reverse, if we have just one contaminated uh, contaminated uh, area, we have that uh, this area is not decontam on, which means that we can have the risk that this area will be contaminated. So after all of this, what's the point? What's the point from this representation using Petrina? So our major uh, idea is how um, uh, how to find the scenario from M0, which is the initial marking, and MF, which is the final marking. And this is sigma, this is a scenario, the scenario of uh, movement of uh, agents, number of agents, etc. So the main idea is how to start from initial marking with a set of uh, agents and finish with the final marking with the same set of uh, agents, but with the all uh, quantum, quantum AI places are uh, AI places are decontaminated. So we will have at the end all quantum AI with no uh, tokens. Here is an example. For example, here we have uh, an agent, two agents. We will need two agents here from this area. Here is the the initial marking. Here it's very uh, it's a little uh, complicated, but here the main thing is here we have A02 tokens, which is two agents in uh, area A0. Uh, we here here for example we have uh, not contaminated because we have uh, agents here, and it is garbage. Okay, but not the quantum all because we have here A1 is maybe contaminated. Okay, here is a second uh, step where the agent, one agent uh, go to the other, uh, this, this, uh, the, 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 the forward, the, the next uh, area. Here is the marking and go to the third area. Here is the marking. Here we can see that this area is uh, critical because it is connected. Sorry, this area is it is connected with one, two, and three areas. So it is comp uh, it is a, a critical area. So this uh, he will call the second agent. Here we have two agents in this area, and then he will go there and come back and go to the end. And this. We have here the, the final uh, step of uh, the marking. Here is the marking. We have the starting marking with two agents in area A0 and, uh, and all contaminated areas. After some uh, scenario, we have at the end one agent in area A2 one agent in area A5, but all areas are decontaminated. Some discussion of uh, this model, we uh, we can see that uh, we can compute, we can predict, or we can predict the number of uh, areas for uh, of uh, places on and uh, transitions uh, of uh, uh, a graph using the number of n number of uh, vertices uh, areas and NV, number of connections between areas. Here, for example, the previous example had uh, 42 places and 52 transitions. Another, uh, another model, uh, model verification is the reachability graph, which is R, reachability graph, and M0 starting point and starting uh, marking. We can see that here we will have a reachability graph with 469 states and 669 arcs. So we can see that if for a complex environment, we will have a big number of uh, areas and, and the big number of uh, possible, uh, possible scenarios. And, uh, sorry. and uh, different, different scenarios. And maybe the number of, uh, the number of possible uh, scenarios will explode. Here is the example of uh, PetriNet for uh, this previous uh, environment. We can see that for a simple environment, the model is very complicated. 
Uh, we can, uh, here we will present uh, some practical and uh, simulation uh, tests. The first is uh, simulation, where uh, that is uh, that was uh, you, uh, that was uh, uh, implemented or realized using uh, MobotSim, the platform MobotSim uh, for uh, robot uh, mobile systems. Uh, we will check uh, later if we have time. I will uh, present you an example, video example of uh, robot uh, 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 movements. Here is uh, the uh, dissertion model of uh, the previous uh, environment. Here we can see that we have four tokens in the starting point, but uh, we had presented because uh, it's part of uh, global uh, work. We have we had uh, proposed another uh, technique, search technique that will use only two agents. And you will see the, in the, the video later uh, that with two agents, we can uh, clear all the building. Here is the example of uh, starting uh, the uh, scenario, uh, scenario marking. We started with two agents in area A4, and at the end, we had one agent in area A9 and one agent in area 16, but all areas are cleared, are not contaminated. Here is the second part of uh, real mobile robot where we use the pop, 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 pop bot, sorry, pop bot uh, mobile robot. Here is uh, two examples, uh, system examples, environment, uh, sorry, environment examples for the application. To to detect for, uh, to detect the position and orientation of the robot, we used this uh, method. We we used a, a printed circle on the robot. And with the camera, we detect the circle, which is the big circle, which is the, the position of the robot, and the small circle, which is the direction of the robot. Uh, so if we have multiple a multiple agents, so we have here multiple circles. One circle is the, for the agent one, two circles for the agent uh, two, and three circles for, uh, for example, the agent three, etc. For the environment uh, defined environment. And uh, we will see if uh, maybe uh, we will have time to see the videos. Here is the model uh, for uh, test uh, application using a real mobile robot. And here is the, the market. We started with two agents in area two. And the other end, we had all decontaminated areas, or cleared areas. areas. In, in, uh, in conclusion, we can say that uh, our main objective was to locate an intruder in a given environment. Uh, to do so, we proposed a model, a topological model of the environment using uh, visibility graph and uh, area graph. And after that, we proposed a validation technique to, uh, to validate and uh, verify similar uh, search scenario using PetriNet. As perspectives, uh, we can start, first of all, because uh, for the moment, we have only generated uh, PetriNet using manually, but we can auto-generate. We will uh, try to auto-generate PetriNet. Here, we can, for, for this case, we can generate any uh, kind of uh, system, uh, any kind of uh, environment with no problem using uh, so, uh, simply uh, an automatic uh, uh, program, so, for example. Uh, we can uh, secondly we can extend our work on dynamic environments and uh, try to validate using PetriNet uh, the, uh, uh, this uh, dynamic uh, environment. We 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 see uh, we uh, the the dynamic environments we uh, is uh, presented as uh, for example we have an environment with the uh, place uh, with the uh, obstacles that will change in time. Because for the moment we used only offline, uh, where the system is the environment is static, and we have the building and we have we have the plan of the building. Uh, we can also 
develop cooperation between robots within the framework of distributed management. We can uh, here we can uh, pro propose, for example, a cooperation between the robots and also a cooperation with the humans. For, exa for example, for example, the human can uh, can propose uh, to the, the agents using his uh, his experience uh, to to do to go to uh, this place, uh, this area because it's uh, very critical. The other area is not critical, no problem. For example. And uh, um, and the last, because for the moment we propose just agents that clear and the main agent and uh, other agents, slave agents, we can say, or uh, uh, auxiliary uh, agents. We can propose, for example, scheduling and rescheduling of robot functions. For example, in real time, it, the robot can the robot can uh, can propose and uh, can change its direction and change uh, its decision uh, according to the, play, the to the the situation. Uh, before we finish, because uh, maybe I have time to present uh, two via the two videos. Sorry, the first one. Here, I hope you can see uh, the video. Here is the yeah. example. Yeah, yeah, we can see oh, the video. Thank you very much. Here's the example. Here, this area with the blue, it's big area is critical. This is not critical, so the agent will uh, clear and go. This also is not critical. This is not critical also because uh, here you can uh, see it everything. Here it's critical. This is an um, this this in this case. Sorry, in this case we have an uh, uh, an optimized uh, search technique where the agent in real time from critical to other critical since it cleared this all this area, it can go with the with the second agent to the other area. The agent will clear, clear this and go to this. Since the agent is in this critical area, the robot can uh, alone can go and uh, verify this uh, area, this or this room, we can say. And finally, the agent will enter here. Here is uh, a little complicated because we have a circle here around uh, this uh, table, for example. The robot that has detected that uh, this area is critical, so he needs uh, another agent to verify and stay here. The blue is uh, uh, the the blue uh, the, the blue line is uh, the position of uh, sorry the blue line is the position of uh, trajectory of the blue agent and the, the brown is the, the second agent okay let me show you now show you now the example the real example Here we will uh, use two agents. As mentioned before, we say, I said that uh, we have optimized the search technique using so, uh, only two agents in place of uh, four agents. Okay. Here he has detected that this area is critical, so he called uh, it called uh, the other agent. It will finish this because it's a uh, leap. Go back. Here he will call the other agent. Yeah. Since he, they have finished this play, this all this area, so this agent can go here because they are sure there is no no invader here.
That's all. Okay. It's finished. Thank you very much.